What's going on, guys? Hey, it's been a crazy week for news. We have had games pushing, which may or may not be a bad thing. Uh, we've had the big Smash Brothers reveal that actually just happened. And uh, also, there's a product that I've been really looking forward to that is uh, available for pre-order um, from someone who I didn't think they would have it. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Hey, real quick, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that we are still doing the Nino Kuni giveaway for all uh, of the month until the beginning of February. So if you're subscribed, you're going to get five extra entries, and every like and comment that is uh, has your name attached to it uh, for this month up until February on any of my videos is going to give you extra entries, as well as the link in the description below, which I will have. Uh, also, if you want to see what's in that bad boy, I did a video about it. Um, check it out. It's really cool. So you get to see what you're gonna be getting <laughs> uh, Anyway, without further ado back to your regular scheduled programming So first thing let's talk about the retro fighters striker Dreamcast controller So I actually uh, backed this on Kickstarter when it got announced because the retro fighters guys They had already made that really successful Nintendo 64 controller which to me kind of built the confidence to say hey this product is a gonna come out and B gonna be of quality. Um, the thing is, that the only thing I'll say right now is uh, it has been pushed quite a few times. I believe we were supposed to get it like last September um, and it has pushed right now. They're supposed to be shipping out in April. Um, the cool thing is, is this controller itself. I mean, it's your Dreamcast controller with a cord that's long enough that actually functions. Um, it has VMU support, which is really cool. And, um, I mean, it has that cool ergonomic, you know, controller design that we're used to nowadays, like with the Pro Controller or, you know, that that shape, the, the comfortable shape we're all used to. Not saying the original Dreamcast controller was uh, horrible or anything, but, I mean, you know, when you're kind of used to something, it's, it's nice to be able to play with something different on those consoles. Now, the cool thing is, is if you, of course, uh, back to the Kickstarter, you got a little bit of a better price, you know, for, for being on the ground floor. But Castlemania Games, which is a website that I love frequenting, are actually taking pre-orders right now. So if this is a controller you're interested in, uh, I'd definitely check it out. We do, uh, we, I, just so you guys know, when, when mine does come in, I'm going to do a full unboxing and review on the channel, see how I like it. I'll test it out with a, a couple games. I'm going to actually, Sonic Adventure, of course, I'm going to test out with a fighting game of some sort. And I really want to test it out with the uh, Gundam Side Story game. I'm interested to see if the new controller makes it a little bit more comfortable to control. So um, anyway, be looking forward to that. Whew, this next bit of news though, man, uh, delays all week. Um, for you, those of you who are really uh, looking forward to Square's new games, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake specifically, and the Avengers game, they have both been pushed. Final Fantasy VII Remake has only been pushed a month to April. Um, however, the Avengers game has been pushed from May to September. Um, I personally haven't really been looking forward to the Avengers game, so, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's gonna be really cool, but it's just not really on my radar. Um, the Final Fantasy VII game, once again, personally, I'm looking forward to this game. Don't get me wrong, I'm really holding out for this game. I can't wait for it. However, I do know that the exclusivity goes up next year for Xbox. I'm not saying that I'm waiting for the Xbox, but that made me kind of realize and think, well, you know, next year, there's going to be a version for the next-gen consoles. It's not just going to be the Xbox Series X, it'll also be the PS5. So, at that point, I really don't know which console is going to probably be my major powerhouse console. That being said, I do know that I've already waited this long. I personally do not mind waiting a little bit longer. Uh, just to get, you know, possibly the best version of the product. Also of note, and this is really only to people who live in Australia, apparently the day they have pushed it to in April is horrible timing because it is their version of Good Friday, which I think a lot of retailers close. So I don't know how that's going to work over there. I mean, I'm not from Australia. So if, uh, if by some very slim chance any Australian viewers are watching, um, I guess I feel bad for you. I don't know if if, uh, if you pre-ordered it, if, if things will ship or what. I have no idea how that's going to work. I don't know if that was really thought through. But then again, it's kind of hard to cover 
every single country when you're moving dates around. But um, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think about these delays? It's kind of a kind of a bummer. If you've really been waiting, really on the edge of your seat, it's kind of a bummer. But hey, you know uh, that demo has been uh, found on the PlayStation um, eShop, uh, whatever they call their eShop. So uh, maybe that'll come out soon to tide us over. And this one does hurt me a little bit. Cyberpunk, as of today, which is I'm Thursday, I'm recording this, has been delayed to September. Now, I am on board with the uh, the the classic saying of you know a bad game launches bad, a good you know is bad forever. A good game you know is is worth the wait. So I'm not upset that a better, more polished product with with all the testing that they're um, holding off for is going to make a better game. It's going to be a better product. I'm just bummed out because I was really looking forward to that game. On the plus side, it does make room for Doom Eternal and other games that are coming out in that area. I believe Animal Crossing comes out as well. Um, so it's going to be nice to have a little bit of separation, but I was really really looking forward to cyberpunk i really wanted a cool game to kind of have around that time frame um kind of my birthday time frame but uh what are you gonna do um i do think on the whole if they're saying that they're delaying it for polish and testing and bug fixes definitely kind of my same thought with waiting on final fantasy 7 go ahead and let's just wait let's get the the better product i think this generation um, and I'm not saying that, that CD Projekt Red has any lessons to learn, obviously. They are outstanding. But I, I just think that so many games recently have launched half-finished or with huge patches. That I really think that companies are starting to look and starting to say, Hey, you know, we kind of got away with it for a little while. Let's not set that standard for the 2020s. Let's go ahead and say, when we finish a game, it's finished. Now, the Smash reveal. <laughs> I'm I'm a very casual Smash player. You know, I, I like playing it with friends. I'm not competitive. I'm not even very good. But uh, the Smash reveal, oh my gosh. So right now, um, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of fans who are happy that the new character got in. But uh, there are probably going to be a lot of people, well, there are a lot of people that are upset that we now have our, like, what, one millionth Fire Emblem character, Byleth? Uh, I've actually never played um, the Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses, so I don't know who this character is personally. But um, so many of my friends who are much bigger into the uh, fighting game community and the, especially the Smash community, were like, "Wow, another Fire Emblem character, one and two, uh, another sword character, woo!" And it's actually quite funny if you watch the trailer. They uh, they even allude to. What? Another sword character? After the main guy kind of gets his butt whooped by a, by a group of sword characters, Cloud, and, uh, and some other Fire Emblem characters. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. So, you know, the game, you know, these, these reveals have typically lined up with, with some kind of big thing happening with that character, with the exception of the last one. And, and my thought process with this was, uh, this character, this Fire Emblem character, I think they should have rearranged everything. Uh, like right now, a lot of people are either underwhelmed or kind of upset about this character being the last character of the Smash Pack. I think if they had moved this character to the third position back when the game launched in the summertime, it would make more sense. It'd hype you up for the game. It's like, oh, here's this character from Fire Emblem. By the way, here's Fire Emblem. Really hype you up. And then you could have ended with Terry and Banjo, which really both weren't directly tied to any immediate game coming out or a remaster or anything. So it's not like you lost any timing with those two, but then you would go out on a high note. I mean, do you remember how much hype there was when Banjo was announced? I mean, everyone went wild. So I mean, I think personally it would have been really great if they had ended on that high note with Banjo being announced. I mean, that just seems very logical. Uh, especially because Fire Emblem Three Houses came out last summer. I mean, is there any reason why they would have announced this character now? Oh, okay. 
that makes a little more sense. Uh, let it be known that this has actually been been on the record that Sakurai does not get to pick the DLC fighters. Um, they are chosen by Nintendo, and obviously with this expansion pass coming out, they're trying to tie the two together. And it looks like the expansion pass includes a fourth house, so I guess now it's Fire Emblem Four Houses. I don't know. Once again, I haven't played that series myself. Um, but the other big announcement uh, of this was uh, the next Fighter Pass is was announced. Um, looks like it's going to go through two Decembers from now to get rid uh, to get through all the characters, and this time it is six characters and not five. Uh, I think pre-orders for that are going up at the end of the month, and it will include a me outfit for um, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is only available through that pre-order. So that's that's how they get you. But uh, on top of that, though, uh, there's, you know, just like all the other announcements, they've had little me outfits you can get. And me being a huge Mega Man fan, when I saw the Battle Network uh, outfit, I was just I mean, I love X. Don't get me wrong. I love Mega Man X. But Battle Network, I played so much of in middle school um, that when I saw that Battle Network outfit, I was just like, yes, oh, I was just so happy. But uh, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about this character? Are you kind of underwhelmed? Do you think they should have flipped it around? Or does it make more sense because the DLC is coming out? I don't know. Just let me know. Anyway, that's going to do it for us here. Um, I've actually noticed that some of my news videos kind of are getting a little bit more views. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments if you want me to keep making news videos or maybe make them a little more frequently. Um, currently, maybe I'll just try to make the Saturday videos that. I don't know. Just tell me what you think. Uh, also, tell me what you think about anything we talked about. These delays, the Smash Brother reveal, that cool controller. Um, you know, and hey, if you're new here, please subscribe and hang out with us. And, uh, you know, hey, as I always say, take it easy.